Hello, welcome to my channel, question number 11 of the WASI 2023 September edition for Ghanaians. From the top X of a building which is 320 meters high, the angle of depression of the top Y and the bottom Z of another building on the same horizontal ground are given as 29 degrees and 41 degrees respectively. So we are to illustrate this information on a Venn diagram and calculate correct to the nearest meter, the height of the other building. So this is a, a typical example of application of trigonometry, angle of depression. So let's begin by making the sketch of that. We know definitely the, the building which is having the top X is going to be a vertical building so let's just say this is the building which is going to be on a ground so let's state the ground also so this is the ground then we are having another building the moment i'm able to stand here and watch the top of another building it means the other building is below me so it means the height of the other building will be somewhere let's just say like this so now, this is our X, the top of a building X, viewing angle of depression. You know, angle of depression is the angle measured below a horizontal line. So in this case, if I'm here, my eye level is going to form a horizontal line before I will look down on top of the building. So from the top of the building and the eye level, there will be an angle of depression. So meaning, I will be standing at the top, Looking down at the top of the other building, which is going to be the Y, then the same time I decrease my eye level to watch the bottom of the same building, which is also labeled as what? Z. So this is the other building. The bottom is Z, the top is what? Y. So I am there looking down. So I mentioned earlier on that the angle of depression is angle measured below a horizontal line. And we are not seeing any line that, that indicates that there will be an angle. So let's indicate the eye level, which is going to be parallel to the ground. So this eye level is parallel to this ground. So if I am here looking at this, the angle of depression is going to be from the horizontal line to my, my ruler here. So it means the first one is looking at the top of the building is the first angle of depression. Because I said respectively, first one for the top, then the second one for the bottom, which is this. So the angle of depression here is going to be 90 degrees. Then I am looking down right away from the top of my eye level down to the line that connects the z and the x and that is going to produce the angle of all depression of 41. i mentioned that this is a horizontal line parallel to this and this line x y is going to be a transverse therefore if that is a transverse there should be another angle form but there is no line here but we can indicate the horizontal level of the building. The building YZ could also have a horizontal level. You can see that. So this angle right here could be alternate to the angle right there. Then this is also going to be a transverse with the horizontal line. So this will also be a 41 degree from plane geometry. This is a transverse for the parallel line. If I indicate here to be, let's say, A, B, then I put E here. We can see X, E is parallel to B, Y, right? X, E is also parallel to what? A, Z. So these are three parallel lines. We can produce an angle of what? Alternate angles. So that is out of the way. We are aware that from the X, all the way to A is given to us as 320 meters. 320 meters. Don't forget, 
from here to here is the same as yz, which is the height of the building we are asked to find. So if this is what I'm looking for, this is what I have. I can decide to first find here, subtract it from this. You know, if I know from here to here as 20, 20 minus 320 will give me the remaining to be 300. So my target is to find here first because this is a triangle, uh, a rectangle. All right. So what do I do? I need to be able to find this very area. And I know this angle is facing here as opposite. Here is the adjacent. I know the angle. I don't know that of the opposite and adjacent. So two unknown, I can't find. So I need to find here first using the first triangle. X, A, Z. Opposite, which is known as 320. The adjacent, which will be the same as B, Y. So I'm going to start by saying that from the triangle A, X, Z. A, X, Z. I'll be having opposite adjacent. So trick function will be Tan 41 equals to the opposite side, which will be 320 divided by the adjacent side, which is now going to be AZ. But attention is on the AZ. So what do we do? We cross multiply. When this comes here, this go, we can alternate. Meaning, I'll be having the AZ equals to 320 divided by tan 41 degrees 68.118 meters right the moment i know az it means by is also known so now I'll, i can now use the by to find this side so from the triangle bxy we can also use tan by saying that Tan 29 is equal to the opposite side, which is going to be BX divided by the adjacent side, which will be BY, the same as AZ, which is 368.118 meters. So right away, cross multiplication, this multiply this. So the length BX will be equal to 368.118 than 29. That will give us 204.051. Don't forget this is degree. Now, we have now found BX, but we are looking for what? AB, which is the same as YZ. So now I can say that the length AX, which is equal to AB plus BX. AB is known, right? AB is not known, but BX is known. And AX is known. So this is going to be 320 equals to the length AB plus the length BX, which is now 204.051. We need to subtract this from here. To get a value of this. So this is now going to be the length AB equals to 320 minus 204.051. Don't forget this is a positive side going to the negatives. The other side become negative. This is positive. So we are maintaining this, sending this one there. And that will produce 115.9 for nine but listening to the question the question is asking for the nearest meter right but we know that but a b is the same as what y z therefore So the, the height of the other building is going to be 116 meters to the nearest whole number, approximated to become 116. Question B, the B part. 
The time taken to travel a distance of 120 kilometers was reduced by 30 minutes when the speed was increased by 20 kilometers per hour. So we have to calculate the initial speed, the speed from which it was increased by 20. So we need to be able to indicate that the speed was at a certain uh, level or number, which we don't know. And we can indicate that with a variable. So we can say that let we can let the initial speed that we are asked to find to be y. So we know that if the initial speed is y, when the speed is increased by 20, it means y plus what? 20. Don't forget the distance in this calculation remains 120. So what is the time? At that time, that the speed was y. You know, the distance is the same. So what will be the time when the speed is here? So the time when the speed is y is going to be, let me use t equals to, don't forget, speed is the same as distance over time taking, right? So if I'm looking for time, by cross multiplication, the time is going to be the distance over the speed. So we are going to do a substitution to say that the distance will be 120 kilometers over the speed, which is going to be y. That is what we know as the initial. Now, so when the speed is increased, By 20 kilometers per hour, this is also going to be kilometers per hour, okay? If we increase that, then the new speed is now going to be y plus 20 kilometers per hour. So the time, the speed has been increased. Good. So at that time, we know that the time will also be reduced by 30 minutes. But let's see what was the time before it was reduced. So the time We are now going to find the time when the speed is increased. So the time is going to be, don't forget, what is it going to be? It's going to be the distance, which is still the same as 120, now divided by the very speed, going to be y plus 20. But knowing this, that is the time. So this is the time before we decrease it. So what will be the, the connection between the time before and the time after? Their connection is that they have been decreased by 30 minutes. Meaning the time before is bigger than the time after the speed has been increased. So the time before minus the time after will give us the 30 minutes uh, difference that we are looking for. But don't forget, this is kilometer per hour. So your minute must be changed into an R. So this is going to imply that the first time, which is 120 divided by y minus the second time, 120 divided by y plus 20 to produce 30 minutes, right? And 30 minutes must be changed into an R, which will be divided by 60. And in this case, I have one out of two. So one out of two is going to be the 30 minute representation. All right. This becomes a linear equation where it involves a fraction. So we can decide to multiply through by the y 20 times 2 or combine this to become one fraction with the LCM of y plus what? 20 times this. So in this case, when I divide here, 
y y plus 20 when y goes there it cancel itself remaining this so 120 will now multiply y plus 20 minus the whole of this as an lcm going here canceling itself leaving y multiplying 120y equals to 1 out of 2. You can agree with me that we can do cross multiplication. How about this 2? We we'll multiply everything here. So I'll be having 2 into bracket. Don't forget this could be 120y plus 120 times 20. That would be 2400. Then minus 120y, which is being multiplied by the 2, equals to this very y, y plus 20. So now I think we can expand. Or before we expand, we can compute this. This very one, which is going to be 120y minus 120y, which will cancel, right? So if that cancel, I'll be left with 2 multiplying only 2,400 equals to y times y, y squared, plus y times 20, 20, y. I believe that to be it. Let's see if we can do multiplication here. 4H00 equals to y squared. 20y. You are seeing that a y is square and now y is there, a constant. That could be a quadratic equation. So sending this to the other side become y square plus 20y minus 4800 equals to zero. So now our task is to find the factors of negative 4800. When you add, you get a positive 20. And that could be, we know, factors of 48 will be, I think, 8 times 6. That's 48. So if I add 0 here, 0 here, that gives me 4,800. There are subtraction will also give me my 20. So right away, from here, I am going to introduce... 2 bracket equals 0. The first one will be y, then one of the factors. This is positive. So plus 80. y minus 60 equals 0. What do I do? Either the first bracket is 0 or the second. So y plus 80 equals 0, which will be y equals to negative 80 or y minus 60 equals 0, which means y equals to 60. So don't forget, all this we are doing, we are looking for a speed, and a speed cannot be negative. So therefore, the initial, the initial speed we are looking for is going to be 60 kilometers per hour. That is the initial speed before it has been increased by 20 km per hour to arrive at the time being decreased to 30 minutes. All right, I believe you followed the trend from the beginning to the end. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tazonomi Online Mathematics. Bye-bye.